What's going on everybody, my name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a Chicago Bulls and Milwaukee Bucks game reaction in which the Chicago Bulls get blown out of the water against the Milwaukee Bucks. And I've got to be honest, I don't have much to say about this game and I'll tell you why in this video. But before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Bulls game today, your player of the game. I'm not really going to mention one today because I don't think anyone really deserves Deserves it, and also your thoughts and opinions on how well the Bulls played. We lost this game 113 to 97, and here's the reason why I don't have that much to say. This game was boring, even in the Bucks win. You know, if you're a Bucks fan, I, I, maybe you feel differently than the way that I feel. But this game was just so long and so boring. And look. Most of you guys are going to be asleep by the time I upload this video, but it is what it is. I can't really change the time that the game was on. But what I can say is, that first half put me to sleep. And look, it's not even the second half where the Bucks ran away with it, especially in the fourth quarter. The first half drove me to insanity, I'm not going to lie. It was so boring. It was a free throw game. Um, it was just a game where both teams were shooting free throws. The Milwaukee Bucks shot free throws in the first quarter. You know, shot a lot of free throws. Giannis, I think they had 10, 11 free throws in the first quarter. And then the Bulls had 11 free throws in the second quarter. And it just dragged the game on dramatically. It's the one thing I hate about basketball. I hate when the game is stop and start. You can blame the refs all you like. There's a lot of problems with the refs today. I'm sure we can get into some of those issues as well. But the one thing I cannot stand is to see the game stop and start. That that first half for the Bulls, I, I'm pretty sure it's on record. I have a live stream, so you can guys go check it out yourselves. It was over an hour and an hour and a half long. Like, the game itself, again, assuming the timeouts are supposed to be, you know, a couple timeouts here or there, maybe you see the first half go for about half an hour, 40 minutes. That half went for over an hour. And that's because of the free throws. It's because Giannis was taking most of the free throws as well. So that's an extra, you know, 15 seconds on top of that. Whatever the case may be. And it just dragged the game on so much. That it just was frustrating to watch. Not to mention by the end of it, the Bucks had a lot more free throws than the Bulls in general. Again, it just slowed the game down too much. I enjoyed the second half. For the most part. At least the third quarter I did. Um, because it was a little bit more free-flowing. The whistles were put away just a little bit. And it felt continuous it didn't feel stop and start but then obviously you get to the frustration of the game and that's where the bulls play a big factor in this one ladies and gentlemen the frustration of the game the bulls lost their cool DeRozan lost his cool Vucevic lost his cool and other guys lost their cool in this game and it was just completely frustrating to watch um now look Milwaukee have players that are going to upset you Bobby Portis a former Chicago Bulls player got in our grilled Pretty much every time. Um, he's a showboater. He gets into the mental side of things. He reminds me a lot of Draymond Green in that instance. He's going to look to get you off your game mentally. Not physically, but mentally and emotionally. And it worked. He played a big factor in this game. Patrick Beverly did the same towards the end of the game. And it worked. DeMar DeRozan got technical fouled. Vucevic got flagrant twoed out of the game. And stuff of that nature. So we need to address this. First and foremost... The number one thing that any basketball team should be focusing on, especially when it comes to fouling, is to protect the other team's players. You can't get into your feelings that much that you risk injuries for other guys. And that's why we had a big problem with Grayson Allen when he was on the Milwaukee Bucks. Because he just had no real care for Alex Caruso's health and well-being when he, when he fouled Alex Caruso. That led to Alex Caruso being out for several weeks, months even. And that was just downright unacceptable. You have to call it out when it goes the other way. Vucevic today threw Green. I don't know his whole name, but we're going to call him Green because that's his last name at least. Shoved him on the floor while he was in the air. And he got flagrant twoed out of the game. Now, me personally, I don't think it's a flagrant two foul. I definitely think Grayson Allen's foul is a lot worse than what Vucevic did. But I can understand why the refs called such a foul. It was dangerous. It was not acceptable. And at the end of the day... It could have caused injury. It could have. That type of foul can cause an injury. 
I don't want double standards here. There are a lot of people saying, I'm proud of Vucevic for having that foul. I understand there's pride in the game, and especially when you feel like the calls are not going your way and they're calling against, they're calling it the Milwaukee Bucks way. I understand it. I understand this frustration. I understand you feel like the game was is unjustly called or unrightly called. I get all of that. And I'm with you for that. I do think the game was not called really in balance because the Bulls dominated for most of that game, the points in the paint, yet we had a lot less fouls than the bucks i get it i truly understand it but there is no defense for trying to go at a player like that shoving him to the floor i get it it's a hard foul i personally would call it a flagrant one i think it's a flagrant one type of foul but again there's no excuse for a type of foul like that just because you're frustrated that could have seriously hurt green in my opinion and i get it you know people call the nba soft that's definitely not a soft foul but you got to understand the type of fouls. I don't mind having a hard foul here or there. I don't mind showing physicality. Bobby Portis is the example of this. Bobby Portis was extremely physical today. But his fouls, granted some of them were hits to the face, were not as dangerous as the one that Vucevic did. So again, he left the game and he didn't come back. And I'm not going to sit here and call a double standard. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm proud of Vucevic for this foul. When Grayson Allen a couple of years ago did a foul very, not very similar. It was a lot worse. But we're having a go at Grayson Allen for that. Uh, again, there's no double standard here for me. I didn't like the Vucevic foul. And it's as simple as that. So that's the, that's the point I want to make across. The frustration of the game. It was shown there. Vucevic was frustrated. DeRozan got technical fouled. Uh, um, Alex Caruso got technical fouled. And that's a soft technical foul, to be honest. AC is the last guy on this team I expect to get a technical foul. Um, and again, the, this is the refs having main character syndrome. Oh no, they're coming at me. They're saying that they're speaking at a high tone. We can't accept that. That's a technical foul. Caruso, as far as I'm aware, didn't even say anything derogatory towards the refs. Yeah, he ended up getting a tech foul. DeRozan's one I can understand. When you're at yapping too much, every single play, you're frustrated. I get the DeRozan technical foul, but Alex Caruso... I have a problem with that one. And the refs really need to toughen up a little bit. And this is a problem every single game. Every single game, there's a problem with the refs. It's getting worse and worse every season. And this season, it seems like more attention is being drawn to it. So I hope Adam Silver can take a look at how the games are, are refed and how... In their feelings, they really get. There needs to be some rules about what's a technical foul and what isn't. Because it seems like they're getting technical foul for anything these days. You can't even have a conversation with the refs without a threat of a technical foul coming. I don't know. Seems a bit too much for me. But the Vucevic one, I will not stand for and I will not defend. You guys can defend it all you want, but I'm not defending the Vucevic flagrant too. I'm not defending, defending it at all. Not a good foul for Vucevic and he needs to keep his composure better. Simple as that. But again, the game was boring. I couldn't care less, really, about the win and the loss for this one because they took my emotion out of it from the first half. I couldn't care. I wanted the game to end, to be honest. So, um, I guess that's how I feel. Hopefully, in the next game against the Sacramento Kings, we can see a bit more of a free-flowing game and a game where execution is more important than free throws. And I guess it is as simple as that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's, I guess, my problem with the game. Why I'm not that upset or I'm not that angry at the game. It's because they took the life out of the game. And when the life is taken out of the game, sure, Milwaukee will be happy with the win. But I'm sure their boredom levels were at an all-time high as well. It wasn't a fun game to watch for either team, the way that I see it at least. But again, Giannis was hard to stop. I guess that's a big talking point as well. He had 46 points in the game. That's his career high against the Bulls. Uh, and he did it easily. Again, uh, a lot of transition points, a lot of off-ball cuts that led to the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis getting the points that they did. And again, the biggest problem for the Bulls, one of the biggest problems for the Bulls is there's no motion in their offense. There's clearly a lot of motion in the Milwaukee Bucks offense. Uh, and again, he made threes today, which is again a big problem. If he's going to make threes, you can't take everything away from Giannis. And he even made some mid-range to go as well. So... It's a tough break. Plus the free throws he had. It's a tough break for the Bulls. We move on to the next one. Milwaukee are the better team anyway. They showed that. That's why they won the game. But yeah. When you take the life out of the game, you can't expect me to show emotion that's fake. That's just how I feel based on this game. What do you guys think? Um, no player of the game for me. I might give it to Vucevic if I had the choice. But yeah. yeah, It is what it is. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow. And or subscribe if you are new. See you in the next one. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.